Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today I'll be showing you guys how to scrape the balance sheet from bar chart for any public company. So on their site, I'm just gonna click on a ticker. Here we'll do Amazon. Now on the left hand side, we'll scroll down to where it says balance sheet. Click on quarterly. So this is the table we will be scraping from bar chart. And we'll go ahead and get the first 10 pages. So we'll start off by scraping this first page. And if we click next, we'll see that this URL changes to report page two. So we'll go ahead and scrape that first page and pages two through 10. So let's go to our R script. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and require some packages. We're gonna assign our ticker. Now, if you watched the previous two videos, we will follow the same process. We have three functions in the script. The first will get the latest balance sheets, and that's if you only wanna get the first five quarters. The next function will get pages two through 10, which contains approximately 45 quarters. And our last function will just calculate some ratios. So let's take a look at our first function here. So we're gonna pass in our ticker. We're gonna form a URL to get the quarterly balance sheet. I'm gonna read that HTML and store it into page. I will search for the table and convert it as a data frame. I'm also going to be searching for the value within this page. And the value tells me the adjustment I need to make for the values. So specifically, it'll be this text here which will tell me how many zeros I need to add to these numerical values. And for the most part, bar chart, I think, uses thousands across the board, but just keep an eye on that value. So let's go ahead and run this block. And we'll go ahead and take a look at DF. So these are the five most recent quarters. So we have June 2021 all the way to June 2020. So I'm gonna go ahead and move up this first row as a header, but I need to place a value here. So we'll go ahead and rename that value as description. Now I can go ahead and move that row as a header. So we take a look at DF. So now we have a nice header. Now I'll go ahead and remove this first row. So I'll subset the data frame to include all the rows except that first row. So we take a look at our data frame. Now we have 37 rows and six columns. So since I want to move this very first column as row names, I can't have any repeating row names. So I'm going to go ahead and rename every instance of total. So for this first block, I'll just rename this total current assets. The next will be total non-current assets and so on. And I believe there's five instances. So here in this next line, I'll do the renaming. And if we take a look at our data frame now, we see that we have total current assets, total non-current assets and so on for each of these blocks. So now I'm gonna go ahead and remove any special characters from these numerical columns by deleting any dollar signs or commas and replacing any and A's. So we'll do that in the very next block. So if we go ahead and run this block, and if we take a look at TF again, we have essentially removed all the dollar signs and special characters. So now for each of these columns, I'm gonna go ahead and add three zeros and convert these columns into numeric. So we'll do that in the very next block. So for each of these columns, I'm gonna test whether the value is numeric or not. If it is, I'm gonna go ahead and add three zeros. Otherwise, just return NA. So we'll go ahead and run this. So if we take a look at DF, now these are in thousands. Now we'll go ahead and condense this balance sheet by removing the rows we don't need. So if the NA count is five for any particular row, I'm gonna go ahead and exclude those rows. So we'll take a look at that next line in R. So if the NA count is five, I'm gonna go ahead and delete those rows. We'll take a look at DF. Now we have 23 instead of the 37 rows, and we see that our data frame is much more condensed. Now that we have this data frame formatted the way we want, I'm gonna go ahead and move this very first column as row names. So I'm gonna remove any duplicate rows just in case. And now we can go ahead and move that very first column as row names in this following line. So let's take a look at DF one last time. So good, we have 23 rows and five columns. It did format this header, but it shouldn't be an issue going forward. And the reason I want it in this format is since I'll be calling the rest of the pages in, what I want to do is merge the rest of the pages with this very first page by row names. So it'll go ahead and match up the line items. I don't wanna have a category misplaced. And this is how our table will look for all the rest of the quarters. So I'm gonna go ahead and test this function to make sure we got everything correct. So I'll go ahead and minimize this function. Go ahead and run it. I'm gonna go ahead and test it. And if we take a look at page one, we see that everything is intact. 
So now let's take a look at the next function. All right, so let's open up this very next function. Again, I'm just passing in the ticker. So this very first line, we'll just create the URLs we need to scrape. And we're gonna go ahead and scrape pages two through 10. Now I'm gonna use L apply and send all these URLs as a list. And I'm gonna go ahead and read HTML. But in between requests, I'm gonna put a system sleep for three seconds. This just spaces out the amount of time in between requests so that our IP doesn't get blocked. And if we don't get any errors, I'm gonna go ahead and return that HTML. I'm gonna remove any empty list or any pages without any content. So in case it's a new company and there's not enough data available, I'll go ahead and drop those HTMLs. So this line just checks if there's a table in the HTML. If there isn't a table, I'm gonna go ahead and drop that HTML. Now to extract the tables, this is pretty much the very first function where I'm just looking for the table, extracting the value and formatting the columns. So it'll do that for each of the pages. Once I extract the tables, I'm gonna go ahead and merge the second page with the third page and store it into DF2. Once I have merged these two tables, I'm gonna go ahead and drop the very first column which contains the description and move it as row names. Now to get the rest of the pages in, we're gonna follow the same procedure where I'm just looping through the list and continuously adding the tables into DF2 and moving that very first column as row names. Once I have merged all the tables together, I'll go ahead and return df2. So let's go ahead and minimize this function. I'm gonna go ahead and run it. I'm gonna go ahead and test this out and store it into pages. So this may take a bit to run and that's just because of our system of sleep we have in place. So once that is done running, I'm gonna go ahead and merge page one with the rest of the pages by row names. And then I'm gonna go ahead and drop that very first column and move it as row names and store it into BL. So if we take a look at our balance sheets, now we have a total of 50 columns and 24 rows. So it looks like we have one more row than our first page, and I'm guessing it's this income taxes deferred. So we have some values here for some of the quarters, and we have data ranging from June 2021 all the way to March of 2009. So now that we have these balance sheets, I'm gonna go ahead and calculate some ratios. So that'll be our next function where all we need to pass in is this balance sheet and the ticker name. So if we open this function up, the first thing I want to do is add the stock price. So I'm gonna go ahead and use get symbols by passing in the ticker. I'm gonna convert this to quarterly data and only extract the closing price. Since the timestamps are in year quarter format, I need to format my timestamps, which are in the column names in the balance sheet. I'm gonna reorganize in descending order. Now to actually get the prices, I'm gonna create this empty data frame and for each of the columns in our balance sheet, I'm gonna reformat the column name as year quarter format and subset the stock price. If we get an error, that means we don't have any values for that particular quarter, so it'll return an NA. Otherwise, just continuously merge the prices into this data frame called 2R. So now that we have our stock price, I'm gonna go ahead and convert it as a data frame and the row name will just be stock price. And I'll go ahead and rename the column names to match our balance sheet. Now the first ratio that we calculate is the current ratio. So I'm just gonna go ahead and divide by rows. So I'll look for the total current assets row and I'm gonna divide that by total current liabilities. I'll be rounding that to four decimal places and return that as a data frame. I'm gonna drop that very first column and insert it as row names. So the row names will be current ratio and my column names should match the names in my balance sheet. Our next ratio will be the quick ratio and following the same convention, I'm just gonna make the calculation, convert it as a data frame, give it a row name and format the column names. I'm also going to be adding the total debt to equity ratio. So for the total debt to equity ratio, I have the short term, long term and total debt. So here we have the total long term and short term. I'm also going to be placing the working capital and the working capital per share. So if you wanna go ahead and add ratios, just make sure to keep the same convention. As the final line, we'll just aggregate or row bind all the ratios and return that as a data frame. So let's go ahead and minimize this function. And let's go ahead and run it. Now I'm gonna go ahead and test this function. And if we take a look at ratios, so we have eight rows and 50 columns, and we do see all of our ratios along with the stock price. 
now that we have our ratios I can go ahead and row bind our balance sheet with the ratios so that's what we will be doing in this very following line and if we take a look at our balance sheet we now have 32 rows and 50 columns and we do see all of our ratios here down at the bottom alright so let's go back to our script I have placed the option to write this to your desktop as a CSV file in case you want to analyze this in a spreadsheet and also if you want to transpose the table and save it as a CSV on your desktop so for the transpose table it just flips the columns with the rows and this will make it easier if you want to use pivot tables in a spreadsheet and analyze this in an annual basis so you can aggregate by year so it'll just be easier this way I think alright guys well this concludes the video I have showed you how to scrape the income statements the cash flow statements and the balance sheet so now that we have these three statements we can go ahead and calculate ratios so in our next video I'll show you how to do that I'll go ahead and place the link down in the description area where you can get this script please subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already thank you for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video